Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay, and what I got for you today is the Canon R8 Quick Start Guide. So I'm just gonna get you up and running with the Canon R8 as fast as possible, approximately 10 minutes, but you're definitely gonna wanna subscribe because I'm gonna come out with a full-fledged, highly detailed beginner's guide. Let's get right into it. All right, so for starters, this is what you get in the box with the default kit that comes with the 24 to 50 millimeter kit lens. This also comes with a neck strap. I'm not gonna put this on right now, but I do highly recommend recommend you put the neck strap on and it weaves through these little holes here and then you'll be able to hang the camera like on your neck you know so you'll, you'll be able to free your hands and stuff all right so what you want to really going to want to do first is charge the battery so it just goes into the charger like this very simple and then this plugs into the wall now when you plug this in you're going to have a charging light that's going to be orange and when the charging is complete this light here should go green so if we flip the camera over here what we got is a little lever that unlocks the battery door. The battery is going to go like this. It's just going to slide in here and it locks in. Notice that little gray lever there. That is the lock for the battery. And if you press it, it'll spring back out. Now, as far as memory cards go, this is the card that I use. Now, this is a UHS-2 card. Now, the memory card is going to go in this way and it just clicks down like so. And if you want to take it out, you could just press it and it pops out. And now if you close the door, notice how it automatically locks. Notice how you have the quarter thread here for a tripod mount plate. So this is what's called a body cap and this unscrews as you can see here. And notice how it has a dashed line there. That is like the key so you know where to put it on. When we take it off, you'll see the dashed line on the RF mount itself. That is the full frame sensor right there. So you wanna be careful. You always wanna have this covered with either a body cap or a lens. You do not wanna leave your camera like this. You don't wanna walk around without a lens on, not a good idea. So here is the kit lens. Let me just throw this on quick. So this red line lines up with the red line on the RF mount. So you just place that on, twist and listen for the click. That is the click for the lens mount. Now, if you wanna take the lens off, this is the lens mount release. So you just press this in, that'll release the lock pin and then you can take the lens off. So then we can just take the lens cap off. Now this is the front lens element here, as you can see, and there is a filter thread here so you can thread different filters on if you want to, and it is a 58 millimeter filter thread. Now this lens has a locked position, so the lens appears smaller, you know what I mean? So you can stow it easier and stuff like that, but to use the lens, you have to actually open it. Now it's at 24 millimeter, and that is an open lens, and you zoom the lens by turning the zoom ring, like so, and this will be the focus ring if you wanna use manual focus. Now, again, if you wanna close the lens, what you gotta do is you gotta to go to 24 and then crank it a little bit. It's a little hard to get it to break past, and then that will close the lens. And then on the side of the lens, we have an autofocus manual focus switch, and we have a stabilization on and off. I recommend leaving that on for sure. Uh, unless you're on a tripod, of course, then you can shut that off. Now over here, we got some ports. We have a mic port. We have a control for a remote here, and then we have the HDMI and USB ports here on the side. Now looking at the top of the camera, we have a photo video switch, which is cool. We got a mode dial here. We have a control wheel here, a control wheel here, a multifunction button here. We got a nice on and off switch and a lock option. Now this is the record button. I'm gonna put it in full auto mode for now. This is a beginner oriented quick start guide. So I recommend starting in full auto mode. If you don't know what any of these other modes mean, just put it in the A mode for now and come back for the full fledged beginner's guide. And I'll show you what all these other modes do when you're ready for that. So looking at it from the back, we have a bunch of other buttons. We got an AF on button. We have a couple more buttons over here. And then we have an info button. We have a dial pad here. We have the garbage can playback and so forth. And then of course, in the center, you have the Q button, which will bring you into the menu. And that also acts as like the enter button or set button in the menu when you have to hit like okay or something. And then up here, you have the electronic viewfinder. And on the side of it, you have the option to adjust for your vision, if you wear glasses and stuff like me. The LCD screen here, of course, swivels out, and it swivels like this as well for selfie mode. So if you wanna shoot selfie mode, you can do this, or you can have it like this if you're aiming it to, you know, if you have the camera really low to the ground, for example. And then, of course, you can have it like this if you have the camera over your head. And then you can also swivel it so you can close the screen and have the screen out. Now also note this menu button here. So I'm just gonna flip the switch here to on, like so. 
And here you are presented with the date and time. So I'm just gonna go in here and enter that. Now you can actually touch the screen if you want to change this, or you can use this directional pad here. So you have to actually hit set and then you'll see the little arrows come up. And I'm just gonna click okay here and I'll hit set. All right guys, so because we're in full auto mode, just like the Canon R10 and the, or R50, this is giving us a little, you know, just hint as to how to use full auto mode if you're very, very new to cameras. So I'm just gonna click okay. Here's what it looks like at the very default. Now, if you hit the info button, that will change the way that the screen looks. So you can see here how it's bringing up the auto leveler and the histogram, and that's nothing. And then this is the basic screen that you're presented with. All right, so just basics. So we're set up for photography mode, and this right here is the shutter button on the front of the camera. So you can see here, I'm pressing the shutter to focus. Now you can also touch around the screen to focus, like so, which works really good. Now to turn off the touch focus, there's a little box up here. You can just press that, and that'll turn off like where you touched, and it'll put it back into the control of the camera to pick where it's gonna focus. But I love the fact that you can just override that by touching, and I just wanted to make you aware of that. So you can turn that off again right here. If you wanna change your drive mode and stuff, that's what this top button is. If you click that, that'll bring you into drive modes. And right now it's set to single shooting. So if you want self timer, you have these options over here. And if you want rapid fire mode, you have these options here if you're shooting sports or something, for example. Now you got a magnifying glass up here, which will zoom in for you so you can see better if you like. Now here is the image quality. And like I said, it is set to JPEG large by default, but you can set this up for raw as well. So if we go in here and we hit info raw, this is where you can go and enable raw quality. So now I have raw plus JPEG enabled. And if you go back, you can actually disable JPEG if you want by hitting the minus here. So now I have the camera set to raw only. So I'm just gonna put it back to JPEG mode though because I am using full auto. So I'm just gonna turn off raw and uh, leave it as JPEG only. Now this option down here is touch shutter. Let me just show you that really quick. So if you touch around the screen, it will just automatically focus and take the shot. As you can see, that's what touch shutter does. Now you can turn touch shutter off by pressing this icon again, and now it says touch shutter disabled. See that? And then touch focus you can disable by hitting that little box up there. Because we're in full auto mode, if you hit this little icon down here, you can have all these different adjustments, and it's just telling you you can choose effects from the presets. So I'm just gonna turn that little info box so it doesn't come up again next time. Click OK. Now again, if I go into presets here, these are all the presets, and you can just scroll through by using touch, and you can get all these different looks. Now you also have background blur. This will set the camera up for either maximum background blur or maximum background sharpness, depending on what you're doing. And you can just slide the slider uh, or leave it on auto. You can change the brightness right here. So this is basically exposure compensation. And then you have contrast and saturation and a bunch of other color tone options. Monochrome is in here. So again, this is full auto mode and it's just giving you some creative power. Now, if we hit the record button, it will start recording video even though we're in photo mode. But if you put it in video mode, the camera will change up a little bit. So if we press this Q button on the back in the center area, that will bring up this option here where you have a bunch of different options for video. And again, you have a record button on the screen right there where you can just press record if you like. So if we go and hit menu here, all right, so here we are in the menu and it is set to shooting mode auto because I have the dial set to auto. So just to let you know, that's why I have limited options in the menu because I am on full auto mode. But if you go down here to record file size, this is where you can change your recording options and you have 60p, all different types of options here, 24p. So what I like to use is this one here, 24 P 4K right there. That's what I tend to use most. So I'm just gonna set it there. Now, if you wanna use high frame rate mode to get 120P and stuff, you're gonna have to go in here and enable that. Once you enable high frame rate mode, enable, now you can go in here and you can see the frame rate. You have a, a bunch of high frame rate options in there now that you didn't have available. So I'm just gonna hit menu, turn frame rate off, and then notice how it reset the frame rate back to 60. So you have to go in there and reselect what frame rate you want when you enable high frame rate mode. So if you hit this playback button here, that'll bring you into the playback menu and you can pinch to make it smaller 
like, like so, or you can pinch in. You could double click on it to bring it up and it'll zoom in for you. Now you can turn the dial here to zoom in and out. I'm gonna hit menu to go back. And now if this is a video, so if you just hit the play button, the video will start playing as you can see. So now if you change the camera into a more powerful mode like this flexible mode or program auto and you go into the menu, Notice how the menu system is way deeper. Now you have way more pages of options. So I'm really excited for you guys. I want you to get out there and start taking some photos and videos. Once you're ready, just come on back for the beginner's guide and I will show you way more detail on the Canon R8. The beginner's guides are usually like an hour and a half or more. I will catch up with you next time when the beginner's guide comes out. All right, take care.